right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the man that needs no introduction, Usain Bolt. Um, I'll be taking questions from the floor. Please wait for the microphone. And uh, Mr. Bolt only has 15 minutes tonight, so we do have to keep moving along. Right. First question, please. Yes. From Anna Kenore. How was it out there right now, Bolt? Uh, for me, it was brilliant, you know what I mean? Uh, the support is hasn't changed, you know what I mean? I expected this. It, so it's just really sad that I have to walk away now. Um, but the energy of the crowd was outstanding as always, and I really love them. It's, they made me feel so at home and so welcome. Uh, my fans really love me, and I really appreciate that. The question here, the man in the green shirt. You saying? I think yeah, yesterday was a sad day for the world, except for uh, England. How's the way you want people to remember you? For me, um, I don't think one championship is going to change what I've done, really. You know what I mean? Uh, I remember after losing the, the 100 meters, uh, someone said to me that, you say, don't worry, Muhammad Ali lost his last fight also, so don't be stressed about that. And for me, I've proven myself year in, year out throughout my whole career. And uh, I don't think one championship or one race or the fact that I, I didn't end my last race is going to change the fact of what I've done in the sport. Okay. Uh, there's a question at the back there, the man in the sitting down, the gentleman sitting down. Thanks, Usain Eddie Pels from AP. I, I just wanted to know what the last 24 hours have been like. How's your leg? What emotions have you gone through? Well, um, after the injury, um, I just pretty much tried to get home as quickly because we had to start treating it. Um, uh, so I went home, got treatment, uh, stayed up for a while just to text and just to talk to people who were concerned about what was going on. Um, slept a little bit, woke up, um, treated again. I just been home, taking it easy, and I just continue treating the, um, my injury until we get a chance to do MR tomorrow to see uh, if it's as worse than, as I think it is. Okay. Uh, questions, uh, gentlemen behind. You're saying, uh, I was just wondering if you could cast your mind back to last night and tell us how you were feeling when you were waiting to come out on the track, uh, particularly because many of your teammates and the Americans as well were quite livid with the amount of time you had to wait there. Yeah, it, it was unusual. Um, when I, I knew that I had to warm up, I felt a little bit tight on my coach. I remember my coach made a call to me and he's like, you're saying make sure you stay warm, uh, make sure you... When you go into the car rooms, you stay as warm as possible, get some strides in and stuff. And when we got into the second car room, into the area where we could stride out for a while, we did that. But when they took us to the area behind the billboard, I think, um, it was for a while. I think, if you guys know, we were there for both uh, medal ceremony. So that was like pretty much 10, 15 minutes. And it was kind of windy and... I remember saying to one of them, like, why did you guys bring us out if you know that we're just going to stand there? You know what I mean? And they were like, they were ready, and then they decided to do the marriage ceremony. So what can I do? You know what I mean? We're athletes, so we just got to follow the rules. Um, yes. Yeah, the microphone's coming. Are you saying James McConey from Crackers Wild in New Zealand? Uh, you're not that old, so would you consider being involved in another sport, perhaps, you know, a bit of cricket, soccer, rugby? Well, I've always said uh, I want to play um, football, soccer, as you guys know, uh, because it's something that I think I'll be good at. But uh, right now, after pulling my hamstring, I'm not really worried about <laughs> that at this moment. Uh, you're saying it's me again. And April, you uh, told me that you want to retire before you start losing. How sad is it now for you to end up with so much bad luck? <laughs> I think this whole championship is bad luck <laughs> for a lot of athletes. Uh, I think it's one of the most surprising championships. A lot of shock surprises have been happening here. So I think it's just a championship. I don't think 
He had, had anything to do with me personally. Uh, I came out here as always, uh, did my best. Um, I'm always going to leave everything on the track. It's just one of those things that didn't play out in the book. But as I always said, um, everything happened for a reason, and that's how I look at life. So I don't know why this happened, but I personally feel like everything happens for a reason. Okay. Uh, gentleman with the gray T-shirt at the back. Davies, SNTV. Uh, you're saying you said that athletes have to follow rules. Are you looking forward to having that new life where you no longer <laughs> have to follow these rules anymore? Yeah, just to be free, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> something that uh, my whole life has been pretty much track and field. I've been doing this since I was 10, so all I know is tracks. So for me to actually be able to just relax now and just to have fun and just to live a little bit. Um, it's exciting, you know what I mean? So, yeah, <laughs> I'm happy. Okay. Is that hand with the white shirt back? How are you saying? Uh, Jonathan Gold here from Let's Run com. I'm wondering, uh, do you regret coming back and running the 2017 season? You could have easily gone out on top in Rio. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, as I told you, um, my fans asked me to, they wanted to see me one more year. And I told you guys I was doing this for my fans. And uh, without them, none of this, none of what I've accomplished throughout the years would have been possible. You know what I mean? They kept me going. They gave me the energy throughout the years. They helped to push me to be the best that I could be. So if I could come out here and give my fans a show, no matter how it ended, for me, I'm happy that I really came out there and gave them something that they wanted. So I'm fine. Okay, uh, gentlemen, right. Sorry. You say Mark Cullen for track and field news on the Trackerati website. Um, much has been made of your forthcoming absence from the sport, but instead, um, what do you think that you have left that will help the sport to grow in the future? In, a, in other words, what do you think your legacy to the sport of track and field is? Well, I've, well, I've proven that um, with hard work, anything is possible, you know what I mean? Um, my motto, as my motto says, anything is possible, I don't think limits. And for me, I was I was actually sitting down uh, today and it, I was doing an interview and it was ironic that my motto says anything is possible. Don't think limits. And no one would ever f feel like I'll be beaten at a championship. And I feel that it shows a higher level to the kids that, you know what I mean, continue trying in anything you do. You know what I mean? I feel that I, I'm on the wrong end of this situation, but I, person I personally feel this is a, a good message to the kids that work hard, be strong, and just push on, you know what I mean? And for me, if I can leave something like that, to the younger generation that with hard work, no matter what's going on, you can be the best that you can be, then that's a good legacy to leave. Okay. Uh, Alex, just up here. Rose, Rosemary, just, no, no, right up there. Thanks. You saying, Alex Spink from the Mirror, is there any scenario by which you may return to run again? No. Even for a one-off or anything at all, are you absolutely committed after after this championship that you don't want to go back on the track again? No, I've I think I've I've seen too many people retire and come back into the sport just to, sh to really make it worse or to shame themselves. So I personally feel now I, I won't be one of those persons to come back. Uh. Okay, the gentleman from Jamaica at the back. From Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Who? Who's that? Oh, God. <laughs> well, all right, so this has to be a Jamaican question. Um, <laughs> it hasn't been a great championship for, J you know, Jamaican sprinters, you're saying. And uh, there's a sky is falling kind of thing going on back home. Do you think there is cause for concern as far as Jamaican sprinting is concerned? No, I'd, it's been a rough championship for a lot of people. I think I've, through the championship, we have tried to predict a lot of uh, a lot of wins that we thought was going to happen. And I think like half half the people who were supposed to win did not win. So I think it's just a championship, you know what I mean? It's just been up and down. No one knows where it's, it's going. And somebody tried to blame me, so I started it. So 
but it's just one of those things, just one of those championships that everything does not just does not go your way. So it's all about just putting in the work and hopefully the Jamaican young athletes see and the ones that are on the team see what's going on and go back and try to fix what they need to fix and just to train hard and get better. Okay. Uh, I've got a lady in the white blouse, please. Night TBS, what is your most impressive race and your most relatable race in all your life? My most impressive race and the most what? I didn't get the last one. What was the last question? Second question. Second question was. <laughs> and relatable race, please. What? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat again, Legal please? Legalette. Legalette. Oh. Legalette. 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 Oh, uh, my most impressive race. Uh, I think 2015. I think uh, when I had to really fight uh, t to win in, in Beijing was my most impressive race. I think it showed a lot of character. And my biggest regret is actually when I first started at the <laughs> World Championships. I think that was one of my biggest regrets in the sport. Okay, the gentleman at the back, red, yeah, red hat. He's, he's been waving for the last. <laughs> gentleman at the back and the red hat. <coughs> yeah, I'm glad even you say notice that. Um, <laughs> um, is there anything specific that uh, you say we'll be doing? Are you going to be involved in athletics in any any way? Am I going to be involved in athletics in any way? And uh, anything specific that you'll be doing? Uh, I'm not sure what specifically I'll be doing now, but uh, as I told you, um, my, my agent is talking to um, Mr. Cole to figure out what is the best way, in what way I can help the sport. Uh, and for me, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to be a part of this because I love track and field. It gave me everything I've, I've had. And um, so for me, it's, it's, it's a big thing. So I'm looking forward to that. And my coach also wants me to be assistant coach <laughs> with him, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, just a couple more questions. Uh, gentleman in the green hat. Uh, you say uh, Elias Makori from Daily Nation in Kenya. If I may digress a bit, your thoughts on United uh, this season, a big win today, <laughs> big, a big fan? That kind of put a <laughs> bright smile on my face today. Um, we looked impressive, you know what I mean? Um, from the start, we played good. We attacked a lot more than we normally do throughout the season. So um, I was very impressed. Uh, all the players play well. I can't really find uh, anything bad to say about the team today. Um, there were a lot of standouts. Uh, Lukaku played well. Uh, Rashford stepped up. And Matic was really good in the middle. So yeah, it was that kind of helped my day today. <laughs> Question at the back there, please. Yes, you're saying. Jeremy Brown here from Television Jamaica. Gleaner as well. Uh, where, where would you rank these um, London World Championships in, in all the championships you've been to? How and where would you rank it? With everything? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is... <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to it's, it's it's hard to explain. Uh, the crowd for me is always brilliant. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the competition has been outstanding. Otherwise than me, I think really it was no one knew what was happening because there were a lot of outstanding other athletes, young athletes coming up and really proving themselves. So that was that was good. Uh, food wise, it was okay. Uh, <laughs> The hotel, the hotel was good. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know. The, I really, London's always good, you know what I mean? Because I was based off of competition and the, the, the crowd. And the crowd was brilliant. Competition for me wise was not so much. So, yeah, top three, I would say. Yeah, yeah. One question behind there, please. How are you saying? Good evening. Simon from KLAS. 
moving forward, what are your thoughts about athletics in Jamaica? Do you think that there's a bright future ahead? Yeah, there's there's a lot of talent in Jamaica, hands down. I've, I've seen it myself. Uh, I see the youngsters. But at the end of the day, I've always said, I've always picked youngsters to, to really, um, who's going to come up and do great things. But I've learned that some everybody's not like me. You know what I mean? You have to want it. You have to be hungry. You have to want to be the greatest. And I think that will be the key thing in with the Jamaican athletes. Do we want it? Do we want to be the best? Do we want to be the greatest? So if they want to be great, they can be. So if they work hard and put their effort in, then athletics for me, for Jamaica, will be safe. So we'll see what happens. Okay, the lady in the red. You've uh, put on this great show, um, the greatest show ever, and I, I'm sure everyone here is uh, sad that you're uh, you know, stopping uh, running. So you've done this for yourself, of course, and but also for everyone else. So now then, when there's this retired Usain Bolt, your bucket list, what will you do for yourself? <laughs> first and second thing. <coughs> I have no idea. Uh, for me, you guys know, the first thing I'm going to do is try to go out and have some fun. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, just a party, just to go out, you know what I mean? <laughs> I need it. I need to go out and have a drink. I have a stressful championship, so I just want to go out and have a drink. And and then tomorrow I'll spend some time with my family, chill out there here. So, yeah, those are two things on my list right now to do. Uh, so, gentlemen, just in the middle there. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Georgi from Bulgaria, how do you see yourself in 20 years time? And in, will you take your kids to the track <laughs> <laughs> to train athletics? Yeah. Uh, 20 years, wow. Uh, I have no idea. Um, hopefully with three kids, married, um, still in track and field, trying to help the sport and just watching the sport grow, you know what I mean? So, and will I take my kids to the track? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Track and field is very hard, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've said I will never, I, would, I won't be one of those parents to force my kids to do track and field. You know what I mean? If they want to run, sure, but I will not force my kid to, to run. But I will show them and tell them that's a great sport and encourage them, but not force them to run. Usain, Jacqueline Magnet from the Australian newspaper. When you were doing your last lap there, you stopped at the 200 metres and the 100 metres. Can you just tell me what went through your head and what, why you did that? <sighs> for me, I'm, I was saying goodbye to the fans. And for me, I'm just always, I'm just saying goodbye to my events also. These are my two events that I've dominated, dominated for years. So I was just saying goodbye to everything, you know what I mean? Uh, I think I almost cried. It was close, but it didn't come. <laughs> uh, but I was just saying goodbye. That's pretty much it. I was saying goodbye to my events. Okay, we've got two last questions. Um, this gentleman here has his hand up. So one last question, you were saying. Um, after this year, after this hard season, do you regret it in any way that you didn't retire after Rio since you <laughs> wanted to do that before? We just answered that question, that question, like. <laughs> Sorry for okay. that. I wanted another way. Listening. Sorry, sorry. He wasn't listening. Okay, the <laughs> gentleman in the white shirt You're in the back there. How are you saying? Uh, Cahill Dennehy with the Irish Independent. Um, just wondering, throughout your career, doping has been quite a big issue. I know you've never had any direct association with it all yourself, but just now that you're walking away from the sport, what would you like to see either at any sort of level, whether a testing or organizational level, so that future generations don't have to deal with it? <sighs> For me, I've, I've, I've always been strong on doping, you know what I mean? Uh, I feel personally, I've said it, I feel like athletes should get life banned if they personally, if you go to your way to, to cheat to be a better athlete, I feel like you should get life banned. It's, that's a fact, you know what I mean? Uh, because the sport has been going through a lot. I said that we've hit rock bottom, um, I think, last last year, a year before. And now we're kind of on our way back up. So now we have to really be strict on this to really help the sport to stay in a good light when it's just all about competition. So 
are proven to the world that you can do it. You can be the great without doping. So hopefully the young athletes can look at me and see. And that's one of the things that I want to to help also when if I get a chance to be around athletics to preach to the younger kids from a younger age and explain to them the work and what I've been through. Uh, because I think getting to them at a younger age really helps helps them help to mold them into the right person to help them to know what it takes to be great. Okay. The very final question, please, <coughs> the gentleman in the, the row with his arm up there. No pressure, sir, but this is the <laughs> last question. <laughs> Thank you. Katie Wallis Weekly from Budapest, Hungary. Uh, do you plan to involve yourself in media work, like a TV commentator or something like that? Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I probably do a few things, um, but not much. Um, I'm not the type of person to sit down and try to analyze a races. I don't mind, but I don't think it'd be fun for me. I'm not that. I'm not that person to sit down. I, I don't like sitting in one place too long. <laughs> So I don't think I'll be that person, but I'll do it every now and then for sure. I, I think maybe major championships. Yeah. Okay. On that note, you. Usain does not wish to sit down for any longer. Um, <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> I just want to say before I leave, uh, I just want to thank everybody in this room. I, I know a lot of you guys have followed me through my career. You know what I mean? Some of you guys have written, written some bad things about me, but. It is what it is, but without you guys, anyways, it would be the same. So I want to thank you guys for everything, and thanks for being a part of this and watching my journey and helping me to build and, and so on and so forth. <laughs> so I just want to thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, we have seven more press conferences to get through tonight.